He wanted an open marriage, assuming I'd stay loyal. Now, I've found new love while he's drowning in regret and jealousy. As our emotions spiral out of control, is there any hope of saving what we once had? We have been together six years now, and during the third year of our relationship, I cheated on him with a close family friend. I had started taking him for granted, and it became easy to cheat because I didn't value the relationship. He broke up with me, and we were split for months, and the times I was single, I realized he is a great beef. I begged for him back, and he took me back, but I had to promise to never speak to the guy again. I'm happy to say I never cheated since then and haven't been tempted at all. I understand how great of a partner I have. That being said, the guy I cheated on was a close family friend D and recently I rekindled our friendship behind his back. Nothing romantic. Have you ever met someone who is a terrible partner but a great friend? That's him. I hated the fact that I let a stupid mishap ruin our friendship. My fiance found out and was angry. I apologized and we talked and he needed space. He sent me a text of his demands to continue the relationship and I copied and pasted it. His text. After doing some thinking I can't trust you, whether it was platonic or not, this is the second time that I know of where I have violated my trust. The hardest part isn't this, but now I have to wonder how many times have you violated my trust or done something behind my back that I just don't know about. You claim this is it, but how can I believe you? I love you and want to work on this relationship, but it's going to require a lot from you. We are postponing our wedding indefinitely. When we first got back together, it took 10 months before I felt secure in the relationship again. I have no idea how long it will take to feel secure again. Eli, I changed the name, will be blocked on everything and you're to never speak to him again. This now includes family events. If you know he will be there, do not attend. If you didn't know he attends, you are to ignore him. I have unrestricted access to phones, social media, emails, etc. Every password I want to know for any device you have. No hanging out with male friends alone. You are to be home by one if you do go out with your homegirls. There will be more, but these are my demands and they aren't up for discussion. If you aren't willing to do it, then the relationship is over. Take your time to think about it. End of text I called him but he said he's not arguing with me about it and won't call him back until I decide what I want to do. I feel that this is extremely harsh considering the fact I didn't cheat this time. Ever since we got back together, I never cheated on him. O believes that the punishment is too far. I think I was wrong but I feel that the punishment doesn't fit the crime. I made a horrible mistake years ago. Being friends with someone doesn't equal sign cheating, even though I was wrong for going behind his back. OP is convinced to follow her BF's rules. Okay, I'll do it. I just needed to make sure he wasn't going too far, but if this is what it takes to rebuild his trust. When commenters say that OP is on her way to cheat on her BF again, she claims you don't think I'll follow his rules good thing I don't let people tell me what I can't do. I'm going to be laughing when we work through this, get married, and have kids. Update one way had a really great conversation and he was vulnerable and said it made him feel like I didn't value him. He was crying and it really hurt me to see the pain I caused him. He told me that please let's not go forward with this unless I can promise that I won't go behind his back again because he can't go through this pain again. I told him that I promise I will never hurt him again and will always be honest and upfront with him now. We talked about the rules and he said they will be temporary and will be adjusted when we go to couples therapy. Now it's time to put in the work to repair the relationship. I know it will be a lot of work, but I'm prepared. Update two, so next month I'll get married this fall. I was with an amazing guy and we worked through a lot of issues together. I thought I loved him and I think I still do, but not in love with him. About three months ago at my job, we got a new coworker who is very handsome and extremely attractive. I mean, I have never been so physically attracted to someone in my life. We started to deepen our friendship, but romantic feelings came. I repressed mine, but to my surprise, he confessed his feelings to me as well. I told him we gotta think about our spouses, but our feelings continue to grow. He told me he stopped being affectionate with his wife because he feels like he is cheating on me when he does that. He only wants to be affectionate with me. I've started doing the same thing and haven't been intimate with my partner. The big thing is a lot of people will be hurt when this comes out. He can't divorce his wife right away because of finances, but he will as soon as possible. I have to call off the wedding, but I really don't want to hurt my current fiance. When asked about her previous infidelity, OP says, I have cheated before and I'm starting to realize it's because I didn't understand being in love. With the guy I'm seeing, we both aren't ranter with our current partners. I don't want to be with anyone but him. Also, he's going to divorce his wife. We have a plan for when his finances get straight. How is she justifying this affair? This is completely different. The first time I cheated was because I was selfish. This time it was because I fell in love with someone else. I didn't choose this. No one picks who they love. This whole experience has taught me how complex love is and that I've never been in love before. This is so hard on OP. 
that's not fair. I didn't want any of this to happen. It breaks my heart that I'm going to have to call off the wedding, but he's a great guy and I'm certain he will find someone else. I wish I loved him or didn't fall in love with someone else, because life is more complicated than that. I don't want to hurt him and have been thinking, oh, the best way to tell him. You guys act like this doesn't hurt for me too. So you guys are not being understanding or empathetic. When commenders tell OP she's gullible about the married guy, she keeps emphasizing I'm going to tell my fiancé. But we can't tell the other guy's wife yet. He's trying to get his finances in order first. Update 3. I took everyone's advice and decided to end things with my fiancés. This was the hardest thing I had to do in my life. I know you guys think I'm a terrible person, but this is an unimaginable situation to find yourself in. I want everyone to know how much this hurts. I really wish I didn't fall in love with someone else. I wish I could make myself fall in love with my fiancé, but I can't. It took me so long to accept this. I hope you guys can understand that I can't convey this enough that I care about my ex fiancés I know this will be best for both of us even though it's hard right now. When asked if OP told her ex fiance the truth, she says, I didn't lie. I told him the truth, that I fell in love with someone else. I told him I still care about him. I keep telling you all that I care about him and would never use him as backup. He's a great guy and there's a woman out there who will love him and be lucky to have him. There's no reason we both can't be happy. When commenters tell OO that there is no way the married man is going to leave his wife for her, she says, he is going to divorce his wife. Unfortunately, divorce is extremely complicated, but he said he will keep me updated. It's not just finances, but a lot of other legal stuff. Since I wasn't married yet, it was easy to end things. For him, it's a lot more complicated than that. When commenders continue to call Oak gullible, she says, No, I was very clear in our conversation today that I want this figured out by the end of the year. That's plenty of time for him to figure out finances and legal stuff. That way, by 2025, we can just focus on each other. Update 4. I realize I treated my fiancé as horrible and received my karma. My coworker and his wife are getting a divorce because she found out he was cheating with multiple women. Plural, he's a disgusting animal. He lied to me and others pretending that we were the only ones. I ended things with him. I'm glad he's been exposed. Now, regarding my ex-fiance, I've taken the time to reflect and realize he's actually my true love. I hate that I hurt him. I reached out again to him, but he said he will always love me, but he's done with me. That was painful to hear. I just can't get over what my coworker did in destroying multiple relationships, including mine. It's painful to see and experience. Eat it. I wasn't clear, but I take responsibility for my actions. Just because I'm condemning his disgusting and manipulative behavior doesn't mean I'm justifying my actions. My actions were horrible, but I've learned from them. Now to the next story, story two. My love for my husband has been gradually dying since he forced me to choose between an open marriage and divorce. My husband, Leo, 34, and I, 30, have been together for seven years, married for four of them. We don't have any kids and we don't intend to. Two years ago, Leo asked me for an open marriage. I was devastated at the time. I couldn't understand why he didn't just want me. I couldn't even comprehend the idea of sharing him either. He gave me the same song and dance a lot of men give their spouses, swore up and down that he loved me. I just wasn't fulfilling his needs. He needed more than what I could give. It was just to spice up our life. It was just sex, except I did ask if there was someone else. He said no. To this day, I'm still not sure if I believed him. But at the time, I was angry and hurt and said no. He pestered me to change my mind for a week before giving me an ultimatum, open marriage or divorce. I chose an open marriage. I just couldn't bear the thought of him leaving me at the time. We have rules we can't bring any partners home. We have to get tested for STD every three months. One weekend out of the month must be left free for us time. Any money we spend on with our partners must come from our personal accounts. I didn't partake in the open marriage myself for the first three months. Leo obviously did right away. He seemed to be gone or out late almost all the time, but he always acted so happy and loving towards me while I felt like I was dying inside. It killed me to think he was sleeping with other women, and I felt so lonely and unattractive and not good enough. I told my sister Katie, 26F, and a few close friends everything. Katie told me to just play his game and be part of the open marriage too. If he can sleep around, so could I. I honestly didn't have much confidence in myself at the time. I'm a bit overweight, and I've never considered myself conventionally pretty. I was afraid this would just humiliate me further. Katie and my best friend Jesse, 30F, set up my online dating profiles for me. I got so many matches that it was overwhelming. When I told Leo he was surprised, but told me to do whatever I thought was best. 
Jesse helped me choose my first date and I actually had a great time. He didn't pressure me for sex and took me out to drinks and dinner. We did have sex eventually, but it was all just casual and we didn't see each other after a couple months of casual dating. That first guy really made me feel more confident in myself. So I kept going on dates with men. A lot of them wanted to treat me, so I didn't have to spend much of my own money. Not only that, but some of the men have given me the best sex I've ever had in my life. Almost like the kind of sex you read in romance novels. It's been amazing. I am currently seeing two different men alongside Leo. One, Mark, 38 M, is more of a steady boyfriend I've been with for about six months and the one Stephen, 25 M, is very casual, mostly just hanging out and sex. They know about my open marriage, other relationships, and are fine with it. My husband has not been so lucky. In the beginning, he definitely was. He was always out and about and didn't seem to care even when I started dating too. But now he just complains a lot and hasn't been going out much. He whines about how he's usually the one spending money. A lot of the women he tries to be with want an emotional connection before sex. He often wants to be with younger women, but they want younger men. He's also been upset that I go out with random guys so often while he's at home alone all the time. He hasn't asked to close the marriage yet but I feel like he will soon. He keeps saying he misses us and wants to spend more time together. He tried to initiate sex a lot more too. He wants to go on dates and go on vacations and all that stuff more and more, and he gets upset when I tell him I can't because I've already scheduled to do stuff with my partners, mostly Mark. Honestly, I don't think I love Leo anymore. I care about him, but I just don't love him. I'm not saying I love Mark or Steven, but I honestly feel closer to Mark nowadays than I do Leo. Mark makes me feel comfortable and safe, and I love spending time with him more than my own husband. Steven is funny and sweet and really good at sex. Katie and Jesse have been wanting me to divorce for a year now, but I was afraid of hurting him and thought I still loved him. But I think my love for him died when he asked for this open marriage in the first place. Seeing him get all pissy about it now just because he's not benefiting from it is also a turnoff for me too. But I don't know if divorce is the best option. I still care about him and I still don't want to hurt him. Maybe if he finally asks to close the marriage, we can talk about it then. Relevant comments. Comment 1. Divorce. You're happier without him. He would only want to close the marriage because he can't get laid. Not that he only loves you. OP. We've just been together for so long that the idea of him not being there feels weird, which sounds stupid since I have two other partners so it's not like I'll be lonely. But Leo was a part of my life for so long that for him to not be there just doesn't feel right. But you're probably right. OP on her husband dismissing her feelings regarding the open marriage. OP, I really do think Leo does love me in his own way. Even when he was more active in the open marriage, he still made time for me and still did a lot with him for me but you're probably right on the divorce. Comment two, part of the issue is the main relationship is supposed to be the important one. So the whole one weekend a month for us time wasn't enough. OP, I actually did argue that in the beginning, but he insisted that he needed to keep his weekends free. He did spend a lot of time at home during the weekdays, so in his mind, that made up for it. Comment three, what if he finds evidence of your open marriage and frames you as a cheater and then brings you to the cleaners? At this point, I wouldn't trust Leo. What you're experiencing is normalcy, you're used to his presence in your life, but how long are you going to live like this? OP. Jesse had the same train of thought of you, and actually took screenshots of his dating profiles during the beginning of the open marriage. She also told me to save screenshots of any texts we had about the open marriage. I don't think Leo would do that, but I also didn't think he'd ever ask for an open marriage, so what do I know? Update 1. Hi everyone. I got so many comments and messages on my last post, which got deleted for some reason, that I was a bit overwhelmed, especially when a lot of you kept saying the same thing. Divorce, divorce, divorce. But the thing is, I think a part of me still loves my husband. I know in my last post that I didn't think I loved him anymore, but I can't just forget about the things that I do love. I love when he sings in the shower. I love when he laughs so hard he snorts. I love when he kisses my forehead when I've had a bad day. I love when he holds my hand when he watch TV together. Leo has done a lot of shitty things, but he really isn't the big asshole people think. Maybe that was my fault. But even if I do still love him, I'm not in love with him anymore. I don't think I have been for a while. I care about him. A part of me does still love him, but you all were right. I should have just divorced him when he gave me the ultimatum in the first place. This past Saturday, we had the big talk. I initiated it, but he didn't seem too surprised. I just told him that I noticed he didn't seem to like me going out with Mark or Steven and asked if there was a problem. He said there was. 
but he didn't ask me to close the marriage. He just asked me if I still loved him. I said something like, not like I used to. He broke down crying, which made me cry. I guess he had known for a while that I wasn't in love anymore, but he had hoped he could win me back if he funneled all of his energy into me. I was honest and told him that during those first three months of our open marriage, I think my love for him died and I just couldn't get it back. I did tell him that I still cared about him and that I did love him, but it's not the same as it was. He asked if I loved Mark or Steven, and I said no. I like being with them and I care about them a lot, but I can't say I'm in love with either of them. I also finally asked him why he wanted the open marriage in the first place. A lot of you in the comments said he already had someone lined up and you were right. He had someone at work he was interested in and she wanted him too. The open marriage was just to get permission. He honestly never expected me to also get my own partners because of how unconfident I was, but he didn't want to stop me either because he thought nothing would come of it. He didn't really like me seeing other men, but he knew it wouldn't have been fair to tell me no when I gave him permission first. I guess Mark and Steven made him insecure because I was spending so much time with them on a regular basis. The open marriage was just sex on the side for him. He only did hookups and they never lasted long. He genuinely always just loved me, but he thought I was falling in love with my partners and he was losing me and wanted to win me back. We cried a lot and talked a lot. We've decided to get a divorce. Since the house is in his name, I'm going to move out and live with Katie for a while. He told me I didn't have to and I could stay until the divorce was finalized, but I just can't. It's too hard to even look at him sometimes. I don't know how I feel, to be honest. I thought I would be relieved or sad, but I'm just tired. I wish I could have been like you all wanted me to be, clapping back or being sarcastic and snarky or rubbing it in his face, but I don't feel like I've won anything. I just feel lost. Relevant comments comment when I'm wondering if maybe the other woman ended it so now he was back to what he was comfortable with, his wife. He went and had his fun and when that died out, he was not left with a wife waiting for him at home. OP. He and his co-worker were only sleeping together for maybe a month. She fulfilled his kinks that I never liked indulging in. That's why he was with most of his partners because... I wasn't interested in his kinks. Comment 2, he stepped out of this marriage first and tried to have his cake and eat it too. The thing with open marriages is that you can never count on how emotions will change. Sex is a very intimate action and many people will develop emotional connections. Those connections come at a price. He placed a bet and he lost. At least he's man enough to acknowledge it and own up to it. There is no easy answer. OP, I wish you healing OP, thank you. Leo just thought the open marriage would be a way for him to get all of his kinks he couldn't do with me because I wasn't into it. He knew how unconfident I was, which wasn't because of him. A lot of people seem to think that he eroded my self-esteem, but he didn't. We can thank my mother for that. But that's a whole other can of worms, so he never expected me to partake in the open marriage either. Comment 3, so he never expected me to partake in the open marriage either. So basically, while he asked for a mutually open marriage, he expected it to be only his side open and then got hurt that reality didn't meet his expectations. OP, Leo admitted that he did only expect his side to be open. He was never going to stop me from opening my side, but like I said, he didn't think I would. TBH, I don't think I would have either if it wasn't for Jesse and Katie pushing me and making profiles for me. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.